discovering the wonders of our state's natural resources, and exploring the thrill of outdoor adventure. Mississippi Outdoors is a co-production of the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks and Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Welcome to Mississippi Outdoors. I'm Amanda Mills. And I'm Randy Newell. Thanks for joining us. In our first story, the outdoors crew goes duck hunting in Bolivar County. Then Amanda goes saltwater fishing on the Silver Dollar Three. Let's go. Hey folks, this week Mississippi Outdoors is duck hunting in Bolivar County and we'll be guest of Commissioner Billy Devaney at his Field of Dreams. About 2000, I decided to get back involved in duck hunting and waterfowl hunting again. I remembered the fellowship and I remembered having a dog. And uh, we grew up quail hunting, we had dogs and how much fun we had. So I bought me a lab and started, started trying to learn all I could about, about waterfowl hunting today. And how, to, and how to find ducks and, and hunt them and have, enjoy it with, with, with people and friends. I love to hear a turkey gobble. I love to hear an elk bugle. I love to hear a lion roar. And I especially like to hear ducks when, when you've got your head down and you can hear their wings and they're flapping right over the top of your head and you're scared to look up. It's the excitement about duck hunting that I like so much. Can you take the two crates back over and I'll walk out there with the dog? All right. I've only got one duck here. All right. That a boy. Drop. Well, that's a big old drake there. We were able to build this place, the Field of Dreams, which is 940 acres, and 240 of it's woods and sloughs. We farmed 220 of it. Uh, got a farmer that farms rice and, and uh, soybeans. And then I have about 350 acres that I've built for duck impoundment that we plant a variety of food. Beautiful. Could not be that. We're seeing ducks. It's hard to create new habitat and have them come there. Uh, that's why my wife named this the Field of Dreams. Uh, she said, if you build it, they'll come. And we were lucky enough that they have come. We do have a lot of ducks and we hold a lot of ducks. Part of the secret, you gotta have food, you gotta have water, and you can't put too much hunt fresh on. Well, gentlemen, in order to be somewhat successful, we're gonna have to change our tactic. I don't know what we need to do, is it? Another open field over here. I wish we had some woods we could go to. See that one? Yeah. Had a boy shooter. Had a boy shooter. That's your butt. People from Delta Waterfowl, people from Ducks Unlimited, Dr. Kaminsky at Mississippi State. I have gotten a lot of advice from a lot of folks, and it helped me make real good decisions. And I'm very thankful that those resources are developed uh, are available to the public. Spin and wing decoy. We put it out in the sun. We're sitting in the shadows. Ought to do good. We'll see. a little to get it hey boy. it wasn't so much quiet in the sun hey boy. and moved it that helped didn't it? 
Way to go, shooter. Way to go. I think we found the spot. What y'all think? Yeah. Look guys, we're just gonna take it easy. We may have to we may have to bend down a little bit when we get here. And when we jump up, if they get up like I think they are, we're just gonna shoot at them. Just because I think they're gonna get up within 30, 40 yards of them. Well we all shoot at the same time. Don't worry about that. Well the fun thing about uh, about duck hunting is seeing the seeing the wildlife. And uh, we were able that day, if you remember, we rode around on a big uh, a swamp buggy, and we probably saw two or 3,000 ducks riding around, and I knew these ducks were in this rice field. I'd been watching them for a week, and I had two customers and friends that were with me that day, and I, I was hoping that, uh, that we'd get an opportunity to hunt them, and it just worked out right. We got there, and they got up, and it, it, the noise going up to them, and their 2,000 mallards get up within 20 yards of you, it was just a once-in-a-lifetime event. Sixteen and six seconds. It was four of us, and we killed the limit of mallard. Great day. <laughs> you ever see anything like this? <laughs> Go get the dog. I think our future is bright. There's a lot of people interested. People that are duck hunters are passionate about it, just like people that are deer hunters are passionate about it. I feel very fortunate to uh, uh, be a part of, uh, of the Wildlife Commission, and, 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 and I'm proud of what we've done as a group and the strides that we've made to improve waterfowl hunting in this state. Did you know that the money spent on your hunting and fishing license is an investment? The Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries and Parks uses money from license sales to enhance hunting and fishing. Like providing public hunting opportunities for wildlife management areas. Advise private landowners on deer and habitat management. Providing public fishing opportunities on state lakes. And operating fish hatcheries for stocking public lakes and streams. So make an investment in the great outdoors. Buy your Mississippi hunting and fishing license today. Today on Mississippi Outdoors, we're going saltwater fishing on the Silver Dollar 3 with Captain Jay Trisset. It's going to be a beautiful day. We're going right outside the islands. Let's catch fish. 39 years as a captain, my, my father was in this business. He got it in Biloxi, got into it right after World War II. And both of my sons, Dustin and Brandon, have been in the business for a while. One of my grandsons is here, my oldest grandson. Uh, I think he's 11, I just met 11. He's dibbling and dabbling in this business. We're going out to East Channel, and we're going to go around and cheat over towards Little Dog Keys Pass. Fish over there between Horn and Ship Island.
a frequently posed question is, uh, especially after Katrina, how's, how's fishing after Katrina? Well, since Katrina fishing's been great, since the all spill here, it's been greater because I like the equator. Every day there's a, there's a piece of pie out here. And it's how big a piece of that pie you get every day? Well, it's all about fishing pressure. And there hadn't been as many people fishing since Katrina. And since the all spill, there hadn't been that many people fishing. So it's, it's better for us because we're getting a bigger piece of the pie. Actually, my fourth boat. I had a, uh, I had a wood boat for, I don't know, about nine years, uh, Silver Dollar. Then I had another fiberglass boat that my father and I uh, had bought a hull from Glenn Young, and we did every, basically built everything but the hull. That was another Silver Dollar, and it's still actually, it's in Ocean Springs Harbor. I don't know what happened to the original Silver Dollar. I, right around the storm, it was around here, but I, I hadn't. I don't know what happened. It got lost in the storm or whatever. Get your own. You already told me. Right don't worry about it. basically have a, a four, six, eight, ten, and twelve hour trips. We also have some have boat rides like sunset cruises, things of that nature. But uh, you know we're flexible. Uh, and basically this is a multi-pasture boat. I'm certified to carry 44 pastures at 100 miles if I, if I need to. So the, the price is all up and down the coast. They're predicated on one to six pastures. Then it's so much a person if you have over six. It's been a challenge over the years, especially the last five or six years, getting knocked down from Katrina and then getting knocked down again with the stock market or the recession and then the oil spill so uh you got to be pretty resilient to deal with this so uh i'm fortunate i have a good uh customer base people have been fishing me a long time and uh so it's 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 gonna be all right there's only 150 people over there <laughs> Fall, which is a great time to fish, there's a lot of a lot of fish in, in around the passes, uh, the ebb and flow of the tide. Uh, bait congregates, and when you got small fish, you got bigger fish. All right. Thank you. There's just a few of us out today, so we 
we talk to each other and uh, you know somebody catches something we let each other know and so we we pretty well work together here the, the charter boats here people have a bad misconceptions the summer you know I've made a good living in this business and I, I wouldn't have made it just in the summer the fall is the best time to fish we can catch fish December January and February the problem in the winter you got you don't have as many good days because of the wind it doesn't I got central heat and air on this boat it doesn't matter how hot or how cold it is it's how hard the wind blows a lot of boats or monohulls this is a catamaran uh, it basically has two hulls and it's the design of a catamaran it's it's, uh, it's a lot smoother ride especially on the beam seas the, the sides you don't rock and roll like with a sea like you do a monohull it's got uh, less drag more planing surface so they're more economically to run uh, but after you get past the initial cost they're a superior sea boat For over 70 years, Mississippi Outdoors Magazine has served the readers of the Magnolia State. And it contains several interesting features, such as wildlife photography, the lunar table, and even a kid's page. Subscriptions to the magazine are very inexpensive, and when you subscribe, you will receive six bi-monthly issues containing articles on hunting and fishing in the state, public lakes, state parks, and even our wildlife management areas. For more information, call our toll-free number at 1-888-874-5785. In our next story, Amanda heads to Rankin County. I go crappie fishing on the Ross Barnett Reservoir. Today, Mississippi Outdoors is going crappie fishing on the Ross Barnett Reservoir. With me today, I have Addison Newell, Hugh Crutes, and he is the tournament director for the Magnolia Crappie Club, and Shelton Culpepper, who is vice president. Guys, what can we expect today? Windy conditions. We're going to get up out of the wind, though. We're going to fish these rocks behind us. We're going to tuck away, and we're going to catch some crappie. All right, let's go. You ready, Addison? I am. Go. So the great part about today is your dad, Randy, is going to be fishing in another boat with Shelton. So we'll probably catch more fish in that boat anyway. That's hey, are you going to help us clean our fish when we're done? Losers got to clean the fish. How about that, Addison? Amanda, Addison, we're going to be using a Mississippi-based pole today. It's called a B&M. It's been around Mississippi for many years. We're going to be using what they call an ultralight. And with this wind and this little bit heavy jig, it's going to, you can see there's a spot cut out in it, Addison, where you can feel the pole. If you'll keep your finger on that blank spot, you'll be able to feel the fish hit that pole. As these crappie have moved up to these rocks to spawn, the sun shines on the rocks and warms them up. And as the rocks go down in the water, the first couple of feet next to the rocks is gonna be warmer than anywhere else on the lake. So the fish are gonna move up here to spawn. We're mainly gonna catch male white crappie, but they're gonna be black when they come out of the water. The male white crappie turns black when he gets ready to spawn and he's trying to entice a female to come to his nest that he makes. Huh, that's interesting. Now, what um, what kinds of crappie are in the reservoir? White crappie and black crappie. That's the only two kinds that there are other than there is a, a crappie that the state of Mississippi has generated in the fisheries lab. But in Ross Barnett, we have white and black crappie. But the majority of what we'll catch here, if not everything, will be a white crappie. Got one, Addison. Come on over here, Tim. All right. All right. Now, Hugh, you can crappie fish many different ways. 
What's the most effective, in your opinion? Well, they're all good ways. It just kind of depends on what you're looking for. Today, this is probably the most effective way to fish for spawning crappie in shallow water. We're using cork and minnows and a small jig. And we're just working our way up this bank in real shallow water and, and trying to find a, a concentration of fish. If we were fishing out in open water, we could be trolling. We could troll minnows out of the front of the boat. We could troll crankbaits out of the back of the boat. There's just so many different ways that you can catch crappie. That's what makes it enticing to so many people. All right, you up? <laughs> All right. Well, after a long day, that's a fish, but that's the wrong kind of fish, Amanda. I'll take it, though. But we'll take it. <laughs> All right, another good crappie. Wow, they're so pretty. They are pretty. But for sheer numbers, you can't beat Ross Barnett. For good eating size fish like this, Barnett's your leg. All right. Nice one. We finally got him one. Dang, Addison, we gotta catch a fish now. Addison, you can't let your dad show you up. Come on. He's not even a good fisherman. All right, Addison! Woo! Now, that's a female white crappie. Now, what's, how, what's the difference, female, male? See, she doesn't have all that black coloration. Right. And you can still see she's got a little bit of a belly. Uh-huh. So she hadn't laid her eggs yet. All right, Addison! Ooh, that's a good one. Good one, good one. Look at that, Addison. Oh, oh, Addison, look. Oh, that's a nice one. Wow, great fish. Great fish. Good job. So what do you think? How much do you think that fish weighs? Pound and a half. Pound and a quarter. Big male fish. Hey, Debbie, how many trout? Two to two, man. Don't let me catch another one. Uh-oh. He got him. Woo! Bring him around here. Nicely done. Uh-oh, he done put another one in. Addison, today was a good day on Ross Barnett, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. You've caught some good crappie. Hugh, thank you so much for having us. I'm glad y'all came, Amanda we enjoyed and it. Addison. I sure enjoyed it. Even we fighting this win, we were able to catch a few. Hey, that's all the time we have for this week. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us again next time for more exciting adventures. Until then, I'm Amanda Mills. And I'm Randy Newell. See, See you outdoors. outdoors.